Hello, welcome to Painting with Jasmine Rempel Art. I'm Jasmine and today I'm going to make a hummingbird art card. The supplies that I'm using will be listed in the description of this YouTube tutorial. You can look there. As I'm using them, I'll describe to you what I'm using. So to start this process, um, I have here a sketch that I've already done of a hummingbird and I just wanted to show you that I have another sketch. I use both these sketches for my hummingbird art cards and what I'm going to do is transfer this sketch onto my art card. Um, to do that, what I'm going to need is this transfer paper. It's quite um, it's a dark one. You can get white transfer paper, but this is a uh, dark color. So what I'm going to do is just turn this upside down on top of my uh, art card so that the dark part is pressing on the card. Then I'm going to put my hummingbird right on top of there. And I have this little tool. I'm sorry, I do not know what this is called. Ultimately, it's got this nice fine metal end and you can use it to press down. If you happen to know what this tool is called, please leave the name of it in the comments. I would appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going to start by pressing down on my hummingbird sketch. Just going over the tail feathers and I'm pressing quite hard because I want to be sure that the um, sketch transfers and that you can see the sketch once it comes through. I've actually already um, transferred this a few times so I already have some etch marks that my little tool here is following. It's following along a groove that I've made previously. Okay, I think that's about all I'll need. It's a basic outline. Not sure if I went around the head. Okay, I'm just going to have a peek and see what I've got there. Great. Yep, I've got what I need. So I'll lift that off and you can see the sketch there that's come through, transfer, transferred through. It's um, quite dark. Um, when I do the... <laughs> the beak's very big. It's quite dark when I do this for myself. Um, I tend to go a lot lighter um, because, of course, when I use watercolors, they are transparent you could see through them so what's going to happen is I'll end up seeing these dark lines. What I can do um, is use my eraser and lift off some or rub off some of that um, some of these black lines but I do want to make sure that you can see the sketch so I don't want to lift off too much. Let's have a little peek okay I can still see that through the video all right, I did not, it did not pick up all of my details, so I'm just gonna make sure to add a couple that didn't come through. And as I'm painting, I'll be mindful of these as well. That's probably plenty, actually. All right, so now I have my sketch on and I'm going to be getting ready to paint this cute little hummingbird. I do have one here that I've already painted that I'll be referring to. I think what I'll do is use similar colors and a similar style. I've done this hummingbird many, many times in multiple different colors, and each time I've loved the way it looks. This one's quite a loose uh, painting, and that will be fun. So let's go for that. I have a ton of round brushes here. I'm not going to use them all. These are silver black velvet series and um, I have everywhere from a zero to a 12. So I'm just going to put those aside for now. I also have a rigger brush, a liner brush that I use for signing. 
My paints are Winsor Newton and they are professional level. They are right here in a palette ready for me to go. I'll be reaching for these as I go along. So I think I'm going to start with my number six brush. I feel like this will give me uh, enough, it'll give me some good control and I can use the fine tip for some areas. It might be the only brush I use. I'm going to start by wetting this um, hummingbird, at least in certain areas. I'm going to be wetting just around the eye. I'm going to start in the head area and apply water. I want a wet and wet effect. Just going to move my tissue box so that I can see the light more. I've got tissues available here in case I need to lift some watercolor. Okay, I'm just using my brush to go within the head area, the stomach, chest area, and I'm going to stop right here at this line at least for now. I'm going to carry in this wetness up into this area as well, the wing, but not near the bottom. Okay, so I have a nice sheen of color, a uh, sheen of water on my page, so I'm ready to get some color in there. I'm going to use some Prussian blue I'm just reaching in my palette for some and getting a nice little pool ready, a nice wet pool. I'm going to use some violet. Any purple will do if you're following along. I'm reaching in too, for me, I, I'm reaching into, um, this is a quinacridone violet, a nice, it's a quite a cool violet, violet. And I'm going to reach for some yellow, I think because I have so much cool color, I'll reach into this Windsor yellow. Oh, it's actually got a bit of green in it because I can be naughty and sometimes I put a brush into a color that doesn't, that has some color on it already. And that's what's happened over here in my palette. So I'm just right now cleaning that off a little bit. And I'm going to do a take two. Now I've cleaned off the top of my color and there, that is a little more pure. All right, those are the colors that I'll start with for this sweet little bird. And I think I'll start with the purple. You really could put the color anywhere you want on your bird. I'm just going to tap in some color and I'm going to tap in purple at the top here. And I have not added water to the eye area. And I'm just gonna go a little bit up the wing there. Good, now I'm going to reach into this blue, bring it up into the neck area. I'm not going to do this very front of the chest because that's where I'm going to put some yellow. Nice. Just tapping that in and we get a little more purple. There's really uh, no particular way you need to apply your color. This is um, a hummingbird from your imagination. I'm not using a reference photo. Now what I'm going to do is get some of the yellow and tap it into the chest area like so. Now these colors are going to blend together on their own and what I want to do now I've cleaned off my brush and I've dried it a little there's some water in here though and I'm just going to put my brush down along this line and what I'm doing is encouraging these colors to bleed into this wing but they are going to be a lot lighter because my brush did not have any pigment on it. So what I'm going to have is an effect of um, gradation. 
wet and wet through the wing there. I'll just tap in a little more blue near the top. Maybe a little more of that purple. And let that, I'm just going to actually lift it and let it bleed down a little bit into that wing. Good, that's good. Okay, let's see what I need. I'm actually going to lift a little bit of color here because I realized that I want the beak to come in. I forgot to draw that part. I want the beak to come in a little bit. So I want this to be white and it will be slightly purple and that's quite all right. This is a part of painting is, oops, I made a mistake. The nice thing about watercolors, if you're using decent paper, um, it often can lift off and that's what I'm doing. I'm cleaning my brush every time and then I am drying it. Once it's dry, I am bringing it to this um, paint and it's sucking up, it's drinking up the paint basically. So that's better, that's what I want. Okay, so let's do a little bit into these bottom feathers. Um, I'm just going to wet Actually, I think what I'll do is a wet on dry here, but I'll have a very diluted mix of color. I have added more water in there. And right in this area, the feathers are going to be um, very, they're going to be more white. So I'm actually starting underneath and I'm just doing little line work, a little bit of line work to save some of the white of the paper to implicate that there are some little bits of white feathers up there and then I'll bleed down the rest of this. Add a bit of purple in there and there we go. There's some feathers down below and I'll let that dry before I do any more. I'm going to go into this long uh, feather and this one here and what I'm going to use for those actually are more of a brown color. But before I do that, I can see that that purple has bled right in there again. So I'm getting my brush a little bit damp. Rubbing. And then I'm going to lift. There. Good. I, that should dry like that. Um where was I? Yes, right here. So wet on dry. I'm reaching right now into my um, my sepia. And that's a lovely dark brown. And then beside it, I'm going to put a little bit of burnt umber, which has more warmth to it. It's a more of a warmer brown. Okay, so I've got a cool brown and a warm brown side by side. So let's take the sepia and I'm going to use that right down here. I'm just pulling down little strokes diagonally. Around. I suppose it would be very helpful for you to have a similar drawing. Um, what I am doing, I'm just going to show you here. On my bird, there is this little area here, which is part of the body. And I am not painting that with the brown because it's going to have a, more uh, of the colorful colors. So these are the tail feathers I'm working on right now. Now I'm reaching into the burnt umber, the warmer brown. And I'm going to do this tail feather in that color. Good. Nice, that is pretty. Good. Now, this part of the wing has dried. 
and it's looking nice. Sometimes what I like to do is um, do some lifting to create some of the line effects of the feather. So I've got my, what brush is this? This is a number two. I'm going to trade that for the zero. This is a zero brush, a very fine tip, and I've just made it a little bit damp. And I'm going to run that along here on the same line, and then I'm applying my tissue. And what I'm ultimately working on doing is lifting a little bit of this blue. What I'm getting is a very, very, very faint white line. I could have done that with masking fluid before I painted if I wanted to, but I like to do this as well. Running my wet brush along and then using my tissue. It's probably quite hard for you to see this, so um, I'll lift it up again. There you can see that now. We've got two faint white lines and that is giving the impression of these nice, just the feathers. I'm doing that a little bit up here. I've got three now, one here. I'll just do a few and then I'll move along. There we go. And I have four, but I learned in art school that for design, odd numbers are best. So I am going to turn that into five. Here we go. Sweet. There. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, let's do the beak. So for the beak, I am reaching into my Payne's Gray and putting some up here near my Prussian Blue and mixing a bit of those two together. And again, I'm going to use um, wet on dry. My paper is not wet. And I'm just going to turn this and I'm going to do under the beak, uh, the bottom side of it with this color. carried out just a little further. Bring it in. Good. Reaching in for my Payne's Gray again. Darken that up just a titch. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry before I move into the top, but I'm taking the same color and I'm going into this eye. For the eye, I am basically leaving an area of the paper for a highlight. So I painted around a little circle in the center. And I want to make that larger. There, that's good. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to do the, an impression of the back wing. So to do that, what I'm going to do is put wet on dry along this wing and then I'm going to use with a color and then I'm going to use a clean wet brush and pull down the color similar to what I did here. So I will use this Prussian blue slash um, Payne's Gray mix. There it is. And dilute it. Okay, same color that was on the bottom of the beak. I'm just going to pull up. I'm just basically flicking my wrist like that. Clean off my brush and run it along underneath. And I want that color to run down into it. 
and I actually might just tap a little more in to encourage it to run down. And move it in. I'm even going to do this to move it in. Good. That will work. I'm grabbing some purple, just tapping it in, adding a little shadow in here. Nice. All right, little Hummer, what do you need now? This little Hummer needs the top of the beak. So same color, but way more diluted. I'm adding a fair bit of water now. And there. Maybe a little more. Pretty little thing, need some flowers. Those are coming soon. Let's get some color down into here. Reaching for the purple. I want it diluted. And Prussian blue, just going to tap a little bit into it, the top. And the same thing here, Prussian blue right here. Lift some of that so it's not so dark. Good, I like that. Now, what I want to do is create a few effects up here. So, I think I'm going to I'm going to grab my number two brush, and I'm going into straight Prussian blue. I'm just going to add a few little marks. I'm literally just tapping some marks here. And it creates a look of some feathers. Good. And now I'm just cleaning the brush, wetting it, and I'm going to run some of that. We'll put just some of that water right in here. Just tapping a very little bit so that there's not, it's not all hard edges. Some of those marks bleed out a bit. There, that gives him a nice, or her, a nice chest. Bring a few of those out again. Some other areas. Nice. Okay. A little bit of water. This is water again. Wanting to blend this a little more. And I'll bring some right up. There we go. All right, the purple. I'm going to do the same thing, put in the head up here. Tapping. Bring that right down into here. A bit of water on my brush, very little. Just to lighten it up a bit and let it blend a little. Aw, so sweet. I think I'll put a little bit of that blue up here too. There. Okay. Let's get this 
feather. I'm taking my yellow and I'm mixing it with my burnt umber. I want a little more of that yellow. A warm color there. And I'll take that burnt umber, tap it in, let that blend out a little at the top. A little impression of a shadow there. Pretty. Okay, so there's so much more I could do here. Um, I'm going to go, uh, you know, I could go on and on and on with details. I could really work some details into these um, wings. Um, I could add more feather effects here, but I'm going to keep this one quite loose as I had here. I do need uh, more things for this painting. So um, it's... Um, Eye. The eye is not looking finished to me. So I've got this Payne's Grey with the Prussian Blue again. And I think what I'm going to do is, again, make this even a little bigger. Filling up that space a little better. There, and that darkens that up as well. And then I'm going to take some of this purple. And I'm just going to begin to tap that in around the eye, carry it out to the wing, uh, to the beak, and filling up some of this white. And maybe some of the blue as well. Tap it out here. Wanting to be so careful. I don't want to mix this blue with my Payne's Gray. There, that looks good. Oops, I put a ton of water on there by accident. Tissue time. Lift that up. Good. All better. Okay. Little toes. Payne's Gray. Diluted. As simple as this. Pulling down. A couple of little it's time for the flowers okay for the flowers I have a rather a lot a big a bigger brush sorry I can talk this is a number five number 10 and I'm going to just get the area around this hummingbird wet And I'm going to apply color in here. I'm just tapping on. That way there are some dry spaces and some wet spaces. And I want it quite wet because I want the colors to really bleed into each other. Okay, so on this one I have a variety of colors. I've got some red, some pink, some yellow, some green, some purple. So I'm going to start with one of my all-time favorite colors, Permanent Rose. Just tap that in. In little bunches, little clusters. Here and there. Then I'm going to use that purple. Again, little clusters little bunches. I am not aiming to control this at all. They are going to blend together and whatever happens, happens. Purple, I mean yellow. Just a few. I don't want um, the yellow to mix too much with the purple. So I'm really just doing the odd drop here. Okay, next, some green. I have some sap green here. Color I enjoy, it's a nice warm. And I'm gonna just give some impressions of leaves by pressing down on my brush with that green near the edges. And I'm also tapping in some of this green. 
good. I want some darker green. So I'm going into a hooker's green and I'm taking this mix of blue, Payne's gray, and that will be a little bit of a cooler, deeper green. All right, another leaf shape here, maybe here. Okay, now this has to dry. I want a bit of blue in it as well. Prussian blue. Tap, tap. Oh my goodness. Okay, this needs time to expand and dry on its own. So I'm going to give it that time. I'm going to walk away from this painting for a while and um, come back when it's dry. Now that it's dry, I can add some more details to the flower area and I'm going to change up this little um, feather body area there. I'm feeling like that yellow is too bright so my eyes keep going here and I don't want them to. So I'm actually going to grab some of my browns and just cover over that yellow a little bit. And I might even add a bit of that blue up at the top. Oftentimes in art, um, things don't turn out exactly as we like, and um, painting can become a process of solving some problems. And coming to a desired end. Sometimes it might not be exactly desired, but it's workable. <laughs> okay, and I think that's what I'm getting here. Reaching for my sepia. Bringing that darker brown in here again. I'm basically drawing on because I have a little bit of pigment on my brush and my brush has a very fine point, so I'm able to draw on. Um, now I'm reaching for my burnt umber again, that nice warm brown, and again bringing that into this area, covering a little more of that yellow. And then I'll bring it again, one more layer up here. Good. That's better. And I have some nice dark values in here and on the eye, so it will all work together. Just deepening, it, deepening up the value of the eye here. I reached for some of that, um, some of my Payne's Gray. Okay, that feels better to me. All right, it's time to add a little bit of flower power. Okay, so ultimately what I'm going to be doing is pressing color with my brush, like so, to create some looks of flowers and a few more leaves. Nothing will be fully defined. All will be an impression. Okay, pressing down. Down, down, one little flower, down, down, and down, another little flower. And let's just turn this a bit, do one here, like that, more of a tulipy type, 
And then I'm going to take my brush into this nice sap green and create a little leaf beside this flower. Create a little stem with this one, stem with this one, little leaf. Good. Going into some some of the purple. And let's make a little purple one here. It's very dark, oh, that's okay. Pull it out a little. Lift up a little bit of that because it is so dark. Sorry, I start talking very quietly when I'm thinking. Right, let's have maybe a purple up here. Good. bit of the blue. Now I was using um, Hooker's Green mixed with the blue. I'm just going to press in a few more leaves here and there. I don't want to overdo it. But how pretty is that? It's pretty. Pretty and fun. And speak is going up into this yellow flower. Speaking of yellow, let's tap a little bit of this yellow into here. This is Windsor Yellow. I like that. Maybe add a little here. Um, I'm going to grab that pink. I still have the yellow on my brush. That's okay. And I'm wanting this beak to literally be reaching into a flower like that. Perfect. What a happy hummingbird. There's some sap green. And there's already a leaf shape there, so that's probably good enough. This has a little bloom here. And I'm trying to decide if I like that or not, if I want to change it. I think I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to reach into my purple. And I've still got my number six and I'm covering him a little and I'm tapping a little bit of that purple in. I like splatter because I feel like it creates a little bit of movement and for a card when I haven't done much of a background, it just adds a little extra. Some yellow, some purple, and some pink. Oh, how sweet is this? What a pretty spring card. I'm going to sign this and lift up, lift off the sides and see what we have. Um, sign it in this impression blue with a bit of the Payne's gray. JR. Jasmine Rempel. Okay, let's peel this back. See what we have. This is the absolute exciting part. Sometimes the paper rips away. Take my time. If it starts to rip, I just lift from the other side. It's not ripping. This painter's tape that I have, I purchased from Amazon and it doesn't seem to rip this Strathmore um, watercolor paper. I love how bright this is and so my eyes just going straight to that area which is great because I'm thinking that this bird is thrilled to have a drink of nectar. Well, there it is, looking so beautiful and bright and colorful and cheery and loose and free. I like it a lot, and I think someone will love this for their birthday. Um, 
once this entire thing is dry, what I would do, just so you know, is I would get my eraser and I would work on erasing some of these darker lines. If you're doing this at home on your own with your own hummingbird, um, try to get lighter lines. Some people actually enjoy seeing um, lines with watercolor. And so if you like that look, then leave it. I want to try to erase a little bit at least. Thanks for joining me today for painting. Um, if you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know by putting a like on my video. If you want to see more, subscribe to my channel. I'm definitely going to keep up with this. If you have some feedback for me, I'm new to YouTube tutorials. I just started three months ago. I'd be delight to get some of your feedback. You can find um, links to my Instagram site and to my website um, and of course you can leave a comment happy creating all the best bye for now